dashing and daring, courageous and caring, faithful and friendly with stories to share. All through the forest they sing out in chorus, marching along as their song fills the Life is like a hurricane here in Duckburg. Race cars, lasers, aeroplanes, it's a duck blur. Something mystery, that in the history, duck tales, whoa! You ready, little Freddy? Yeah, you excited? Oh my goodness, I bet you are you're shaking. You're shaking like a leaf. Come here, Bubbles. Oh, I love you. Okay, we're gonna go. All right, let us go, bud. <laughs> wait, 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 before you try to jump out of the car, let me unhook you, yeah? That sounds like a smart idea. This crazy boy is ready for his walk, huh? <laughs> He's so excited. Let's see how fast he'll poop. <laughs> Come here, sweet boy. This way. Good job. You want to pee on it? What are we doing here? We thinking about it? You smell something? All right, we found the spot. Good for you. Hey, I'm trying to film a very peaceful thing, Mr. Go-Go Man. Mr. Go-Go Man, look at that, Speedy. My goodness. So it has officially been 14 days since I started doing these walkabouts. And I gotta say, man, from a physical standpoint to a mental standpoint, I feel good. There's a part of me that feels like I'm not doing enough, especially coming from somebody who was training for a marathon. I don't know, I just feel like walking isn't very intense and I like intense activities, but it's been nice, you know, getting out. <laughs> There's so much going on right now. So many bugs. Good. Are you, are you pooping? Uh, buddy. We literally just started, dude. What the hell? I don't even know what I was saying. I was saying something about marathons, something about feeling feeling like walking isn't aggressive enough <laughs> or intense enough. But you know what? I gotta say that it has been wonderful to get out. Maybe I'm just feeling just a Im immense gratitude right now because I couldn't walk for a short while with my cast and then after the cast I still couldn't walk because I didn't have enough strength in my legs. So maybe I'm just feeling that gratitude right now, but oh, I mean, look at this, right? Like this is beautiful. In yesterday's video, somebody mentioned something about trash cans, um, you know, throwing Buddy's poop away in the trash can and picking up more extra bags and stuff. Uh, Japan doesn't really have trash cans. Um, that got ruined in the early 90s. Japan used to have public trash cans, but, oh wait, look, they're a military plane. For all you guys in the US, those are your boys and girls. Some of you guys might be old enough to remember this, I don't know if it was a it was a big deal 
outside of Japan, but it was definitely a huge deal in Japan. There was a terrorist organization called the Om Shinrikyo, and basically their MO was taking sur surin gas and hiding it in different public areas like trash cans, train locker rooms, bioweapon gas attacks. And so while that was going on, Japan took away trash cans, public trash cans, and uh, what they actually found out was when everything was said and done, the Japanese people still maintained cleanliness in the streets. Like people were still taking their trash home even without public trash cans and stuff. So uh, they never reinstated public trash cans. You see them very, very seldomly. I mean, they do exist, but uh, it's, not a, it's not a thing you see very commonly. So anytime you go for a walk, uh, and you have, you know, trash, chances are you're probably going to hold on to it. Um, or if you go to a convenience store, you could just chuck your stuff. But yeah, Japan took away public trash cans in the early 90s and just never brought it back. Another comment I received yesterday was about stoicism. I don't really know if I could contribute much to the whole concept of stoicism just because I'm still learning it myself. I read like one book. It was a Ryan Holiday book about stoicism and that's as much stoicism as I've ever really studied. I know stoicism has certain belief systems like, you know, foregoing passion for simplicity in life, focusing on what you can control and not worrying about things around you. I do get told quite frequently that I am very stoic, which I don't see myself. <laughs> uh, just because I'm a very passionate person, um, I'm definitely you know, type A personality, constantly go, 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 trying to build a life bigger than myself, you know? But part of the reason why I might seem stoic is because I really focus on the first thing I mentioned, which is controlling what I can and not worrying about the things that I can't, right? But that wasn't really stoicism that taught me that. That was actually just over the years of learning self-development and business, reading a lot of those books, I, I really picked up on those that mindset. And it changed my life, honestly. I'm a lot happier of a person, less anxious of a person. The biggest thing for me is, you know, controlling what I can, controlling my emotions, and not putting weight on the things that I can't control. Especially in the world today, there's so many things going on. Wars, political unrest, division between ideals. Obviously, I have my own ideals and my own thoughts on these matters, but at the end of the day, I don't stress about it. I don't really put too much thought into it because I can't really control how the world moves forward. I can't really control what people do. I can only control my actions and how I respond to those stressors or those things in my life. Another thing that made a huge difference in my life is taking responsibility for everything that has happened in my life. You know, obviously there are things that have been done to me that were not my fault, but that just goes back to not being able to control what other people do. So I just focus on how I move past a certain situation, what I can control for myself. And, you know, like even with my weight, for instance, right? I gained a lot of weight. And if I really wanted to sit down and point fingers and blame, I totally could. You know, I had a very rocky upbringing um, having an Asian mom who was constantly taking digs at my weight did not do me any favors. And so if I really sat down and thought about it, there's so many things. I could blame the food industry. I could blame, you know, just anybody and anything. But what really ended up making a huge difference in my life is taking responsibility for my own actions.
basically I stopped acting like a victim, right? I stopped pointing fingers and blaming people for th choices that I made. You know, for instance, like even with my my mom, right? She she did take a lot of digs at me for my looks, my weight, but like I said a couple videos ago, when she used to blame me for gaining weight after she had she was pregnant with me, um, it's one of those things. I may have been the cause, but she is the reason she stayed fat for you know years after I was born. And it's it's kind of the same idea is that there might be a catalyst for certain emotions or certain things that trigger something in your life, but. If you, if you continue to hold on to that and let it control your life, then, you know, ultimately it's your decisions, decision to do that. And it was really hard at first to kind of grasp onto that mentality because, you know, I think human nature, we, 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 it's, it's easier for us to just point fingers and blame other people. Um, because nobody wants to feel like they're in the wrong or nobody wants to feel like they're responsible for the way their life turned out. But in reality, there, we always have a choice, right? We always have decisions that we can make that either takes us to point A, B, C, D, E. There's so many options. When I realized that, it, like I said, it was really hard to switch my mindset from being, being a victim um, vic and pointing fingers and blaming everybody. But when I, when I got it down and I started taking control of my life, I realized how much power it gave me over my life. Because at that point, no matter what happened to me, no matter what happened in the world, I realized that, well, number one, I can only change what I can control. I can only focus on how I feel about the situation and how I choose to proceed beyond that, beyond the event. Hi, sweet boy. You see the car? You don't want to go? We got to go back, buddy. We got to get you some food. Come on, sweet boy. Come on. I know. Come here, sweet baby. Come here. My dad was diagnosed with diabetes when he was in his late 30s. And when he got diagnosed with diabetes, it was like that was it for him. Like he gave up. He was like, you know what? I, I got the disease. That's it. There's there's nothing I can do. There's this is this is basically a death sentence. Like this is this is my life now. I've also met other people with diabetes who have gotten the diagnosis, obviously got distraught by it, but decided to change their life. You know, they try, they changed their eating habits, they changed their sleeping habits, they got more physically active, and in some cases have reversed diabetes. And I'm not saying that men mentality alone can completely get rid of a disease, but I do think that there is a difference in the way people think and how they handle a situation that completely changes the outcome of the same diagnosis. People who allow an event in their life to completely take control of them, or people who take control of the event in their life. I have a friend of mine, I'm so proud of her. Um, last year she she kind of had a mental, mental breakdown, which we've all been there, I'm sure, at one point or another. Some of you guys may have been lucky enough to avoid it, but most of us, I think, have had a time in our lives where life just knocks us down and I remember prior to that, she, she was very, she was, a, she was a victim essentially, you know, in terms of everything and anything was everybody's fault. And, you know, she never really took responsibility for, for the way her life turned out. If she's watching this, um, I'm sorry I'm, that I'm talking about you. <laughs> but after her breakdown, she slowly started to realize that she had more control and more power in her own life than she actually thought. And ever since she, you know, stopped blaming people for the way her life turned out and started to kind of take control of her emotions, started to take control of her actions, she is in such a better place now mentally and physically. She is, I can't, like, it almost makes me want to cry when I think about it. 
because I was in the same boat when my dad passed away. There was a year of my life I couldn't even leave the house, right? And I was constantly mad at the world. I was constantly blaming everybody and anything. Hardest year of my life. 20, 2015 was the hardest year of my life. I couldn't leave the house. I was agoraphobic. I was very, very uh, suicidal. Ow. But around that time is when I realized, like, you know, shit's going to happen in life. Shit's going to happen, and sometimes there's nothing I can do about it. My dad's going to die. My grandma's going to die. My mom's going to die. Um, there's just some life events that are going to get tossed my way. And if I sat there and got mad about it and frustrated about it and just started blaming those outside sources as to why I'm miserable. That's just, that just makes me feel so insignificant and so weak, not weak, but so helpless, you know? When I let the outside world control how I feel and control my actions. You know, when I used to feel insecure about people, what people used to say to me, I realize that, you know, they are saying those things 100%, but I have the decision to let those words either destroy me, destroy me or to just ignore it and focus on the things that I need to focus for myself. You know, because ultimately, when people say something to us, it's clear there's clearly something that we are uncomfortable with of within ourselves because if we were truly confident in in something that somebody says about us, then we wouldn't we wouldn't be offended by it. We wouldn't be so insecure about it. I've learned that if I if I'm taking offense to something, then I need to look within, right? I need to figure out number one, is that something that I'm actually insecure about? And if it's something that I'm insecure about, why am I insecure about it? And if and how can I change that insecurity? How can I become more confident in that area that I'm insecure about? And if I'm taking offense to something and I'm not insecure about it, then that's also on me. Because I'm allowing these person's words to affect me in such a negative way. No matter what, you know, because I'm a human being, there's always going to be that initial anger, that initial frustration. But how I move past that, am I going to hold on to it as a grudge? Am I going to hate them for the rest of my life? Or am I just going to say, you know what? I'm going, to let, I'm going to let it go. I'm not even going to let this clog up mental space in my head. I don't know if any of this made sense. I was trying to be very coherent with it, but like I said, I'm a little distracted today. I'm a little scatterbrained. So hopefully I made some sense. And if I didn't, well... I'm sorry. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. I'm gonna go because this little boy is begging for my attention right now. So I'm just gonna focus on the road and just, you know, hang out with him for a bit. But, yeah, thanks again for hanging out with me. Hopefully you guys were able to get out on your walk today. How are you doing, sweet boy? You okay? But, yeah, thank you so much for hanging out with me today. Today is day 14. That means two weeks straight. Of walking every single day and it's been fun I'm so glad that you guys have been joining my journey and I really really I really actually look forward to these at first it was kind of you know stressful but now I'm actually really really enjoying it I'm enjoying the walks I'm enjoying these daily videos it's been really fun for me to just have just to feel like there's people out there that are joining me on this adventure and it's been, it's been a lot of fun. So thank you so much. But wherever you're at, morning or night, I hope it's a good one. And I will see you guys tomorrow.